what's going on guys pictures by schoolboy here welcome back to another video this is my first live stream so let's see how this goes all right so in today's video i'm going to show you guys how i retouch this beautiful portrait and um, i'm going to take you guys through all the steps open all the folders right here and show you how and what i did exactly to get this beautiful image so if i turn on this layers this is how it looks i want to give you guys a quick before and after before we start so this is the after this is before this is after now before we get started i have a behind the scenes video on how i shot these particular images so if you would like to see how i shot it the behind the scenes everything that went into the creating process or the creativeness of this image make sure you check the first link down in the description box below i'll put the link down in the description box below make sure you check that video out and you get to know how i shot this beautiful portrait all right let's get right into it so starting off this is where it all starts anytime i open up this anytime i open up um, an image in photoshop as we all know if it's a raw file it takes you to the um the raw camera raw tab for you to make your basic adjustment before you open it in photoshop so i've already made that basic adjustment and um, it wasn't anything too serious i just brought down the white and um, that was it so before we start i want you guys to know that the key to getting um, amazing results anytime you edit is to first get it right in camera make sure you get the right settings all your settings are right everything is right um the exposure white balance aperture everything is right in camera before you know you go ahead to edit before because if everything is right in camera it's always going to turn out well you are always going to get great results whenever you edit so that is the first thing that i'm going to the first tip i'm going to give you guys before we get right into it now starting off i have my background copy layer right here so what i did is i duplicated the background layer and um, i made a copy and on this copy is where i clean all my little blemishes and imperfections so if i zoom in this is a before and after if you take a look at the lip right here you can see i removed the pimple right there and all the stray hair on the face and these little things on the face this is the layer i remove everything on if i come right to the tummy here as well if i turn it off as you can see there was a little bit of blemishes on the skin and this is the layer that i removed everything on if we come to the hand here also if i turn the layer off this is how it looks as you can see there are quite some rashes on the skin and um, this is where i remove everything moving on i have my frequency separation so right after moving removing everything i move on to the frequency separations and i do it with the retouching academy so i have the retouching academy right here and uh, let me know if you want it dm me on instagram i'll give you a link to you know download it and you can also use it it's super easy it's helpful it helps you retouch faster and that is what i've been using for some quite some time now all right so if i turn on my frequency separation layer this is how it also looks before and after and as you can see with this image i run both frequency separation and um, dodging and burn i didn't just go with frequency separation even though after the frequency separation i mean it turned out great because i always take time with my frequency separation i always make sure i choose the right radius for the skin and if i have to do it 10 times to get the right radius i'll always do it you know to get the right number 
for the blurriness for of the skin so that i can get the better result whenever i start working on the skin so as you can see the skin looks fine with the frequent separation at this moment i could have chosen not to even go ahead with the dodging and burning but hey there were some little things on the face that the frequency separation couldn't remove so i decided to you know um remove it with um the dodging and burning and if i turn on the dodging and burning this is how it looks just pay close attention to the face this is how it looks because most of the dodging and burning i did it on the face and this is macro dodging and burning there is another dodging and burning but we'll get right there and um that was it if you take a look at the face this is how this is the before and this is the after i removed all the things right here that the frequency separation couldn't remove and um the skin to the colors wasn't consistent so i had to use the dodging and burning to you know correct all that and make it look how it's looking now right after that i went on with um, enhancing various parts of the body so starting with the eyes i have the eyes right here if i turn it on as you can see it looks more white and not reddish as it looked before after before after as you can see it makes a huge difference these are the little things that you know always makes a very huge difference at the end of every retouch and um, i did the same for the teeth as well and with the quieting of the eyes and the teeth i have a new technique that i use to whiten eyes and teeth previously i used to use an action that i downloaded and um, i noticed anytime i use it and um, i bring down the opacity because it was a little too much for me it didn't look real anytime i decide to bring down the opacity and it also had a lot of blues in them so i stopped using it discovered this new technique and um, it's super easy super simple if you would like to see a tutorial on that technique drop it down in the comment section below and um, let me know how you know you want it and um, i'll make sure to publish that video as well so that is what i use for the eyes and teeth and uh, moving on we have the this lipstick tab right here so this is where i enhanced you know the lipstick and with this i actually edited this picture with my previous computer i have a new computer right now and that is what i am recording this video on there is um there is another retouching you know plugin that has the 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 lipstick thing right in and that was what i used but i haven't installed it on this computer for some reasons when i install it it doesn't come that is why i don't have it here but i enhance the lipstick and um, you can you can do it with just the hue and saturation adjustment layer you can always bring the hue the saturation let's say you open the hue and saturation like this you can increase the saturation and then you you invert the layer and then you use your brush to mask out only the lips and it's going to give you the same results so that is what i use and um, if i give you a quick before and after as you can see it looks nice and i did same with the blush the the reason why i do these things is anytime you do the frequency separation and dodging and burning it takes out a lot of you know sometimes a lot of details from the skin and um, i like to bring it back as much as possible when i'm done with the skin so that you know it looks the way that i want it to look and i notice with this particular image the blush because of the radius i choose for the face the frequency separation of the face it took out most of the blush so i had to bring it back and um this is how it looks i mean i brought down the opacity to 86 and um this is how it looks i mean it's it's a little down it, it's not too much in your face but that is the the look that i was going for if i zoom out like this you can actually see it 
here is a quick before and after and it looks great in my opinion moving on we have the grade and this is where i do all the color grade so if i turn it on like this this is a before and after because i got everything right in camera i mean i didn't have to do so much with the color grade because it already looks amazing in my opinion so i just wanted to enhance the colors just a little bit and um, not make it too crazy so if i open the grade folder this is how it looks i started off let me turn all these off i started off with the gradient map and um, if i open the gradient map tab this is how it looks also i have a video on the channel it's actually my most popular video and um, that video explains how to color grade with just gradient maps that is what i always use to color grade and it's super easy and it works on every image that you you know you want to color grade it with since it's just copying colors or sampling colors from the skin and making it a gradient to color grade so i have a video that that will be the second link down in the description box below make sure you check that video out if you would like a more in-depth tutorial on how to color grade with just the gradient map so that is what i first did and if i open it this is how the gradient look i sampled colors from the skin tone and turned it into this gradient and i changed the blend mode to soft light and brought down the opacity to 15 that is basically what i did and this is how it looks moving on i went with selective color and if i open that tab as well as you can see i play with my whites a little bit so anytime there's quite some whites in my image i always bring down the yellows to you know to take out the yellows from the white and introduce a little bit of blues i always do that and i mean it works for me and i'm with the science too if you take a look minus 26 minus 11 for the magentas and uh, minus 22 for the blacks as well and um with the reds too little adjustments plus three for the cyan my minus three sorry minus three for the cyan minus three for the magentas minus two for yellows and plus five for black super simple little adjustments nothing too crazy and um, that was it for just the selective color if i turn it on and off you can't really see the difference but you can actually see it a little if you take a look at the background and not the subject so if i turn it on here's the before and after little adjustment but it all comes together to make a great color grade moving on we have the color balance and with color balance this is where i also you know try and change up colors and make it a little more pleasing so with the shadows i added a little bit of red and you know magentas and blues that is what i added to the shadows and with the highlight before because we have whites in the highlight i always like to add blues to my to my highlight so um i added a little bit of blue plus five um, plus four and um, i added a little bit of magentas as you can see and a little bit of science as well and with the mid-tones too little little adjustment minus one for the cyan minus two for magenta and minus four for yellows and that is basically it with these little um adjustment layers you can get great results if you the picture already looks amazing out of camera you don't always have to do too much with the color grid and all right let's move on after grading you know i always add a little bit of levels what i've noticed throughout my photography and retouching journey is anytime i add levels after i color grade it helps the colors pop up just a little bit more it gives 
the color that a little pop that it always needs so anytime i'm done color grading i make sure to add a little bit of levels no matter what the images i always make sure i add a little bit of levels after color grading so this is a quick before and after of the color grade and as you can see it's very simple it's not too much but it looks amazing now moving on to the second dodge and burn i talked about earlier this is the global dodge and burning the first one was micro dodge and burn and that one was to remove little things and you know on the skin and also help smoothing out the skin and make the skin look great but for with this one it's just contouring the image you know bringing back the highlights where it's supposed to be and also shadows where it's supposed to be to give that dynamic range that you know the image lost through the retouching of the skin if i turn it off right now you can see that it looks fine right but it it also looks flat there is no depth in the face but if i turn it on as you can see it, it gives the the image a little bit of depth now the highlights are more defined and uh, the shadows are more defined as well and i do this with the entire image if you take a look at the face that is where you see it the most but i've brought down the opacity to 59 so that it isn't too much so here's a quick before and after of the global dodging and burning as you can see it gives the image the depth that you know it's lost during the frequency separation at the macro dodging and burning moving on i created a stamp visible layer and the reason why i did this was i wanted to enhance the body just a little bit so i created a stamp visible layer went to filter and then liquefy so with the liquefy i use this tool and i enhance the body just a little bit so here is a before and after little adjustment but great results as you can see you wouldn't even know i did something to the body if i hadn't tell you or if you hadn't watched this video all right so that was it that was the final step and um, i sharpened it a little and added my my watermark and that was it so let me give you guys another before and after years before here is the after before after it looks amazing with these simple layers and these simple steps so that would be great if you made it to this part of the video drop a heart emoji in the comment section below and let me know you've watched this video up to this point and a big thanks to you if you made it this far that will be the end of today's video make sure you subscribe to the channel turn on the post notification bell to get notified anytime i drop a new video and uh, i will see you guys in the next one peace out